for another edition of Love What You Do, Do, Do What You Love. I'm here with Darren Ferretto from Dog's Day Afternoon. Darren, people that don't know what Dog's Day Afternoon is, can you tell us a little bit about what it is? Because it, it, it started off a dog walking service. Yeah, it started yeah? off simply as a dog walking service. Moved over to Melbourne, 97. Did a corporate job. So, 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 so... You're at this point now, so I know that you've got you've got um, um, what do you call it? Is it a, um, a salon? A, a salon. Yep. It is a, a dog salon. So yep. a grooming salon in Albert Park. In Albert Park. So we're forward here in like a 2018. You got the you got the salon. You got the dog walking. But it was not always like that. You you said you started off in the corporate sector back in Adelaide. No, here in Melbourne, I came over and uh, just got a job in a call centre. Uh, started walking dogs part time. Came up with the concept. So, so we so started walking dogs part time. So that's pretty random. So I mean, back then, I mean now it's the norm. Dog walking services uh, everywhere. Uh, so we're talking what early early nineties. Ninety seven. Ninety seven. Uh, okay. Yeah, ninety seven, ninety eight. When I moved over, was sitting at the George in St Kilda. Yeah, yeah. And I'm watching all these dogs go past on the weekend, and I'm thinking, what are these dogs during the middle of the week doing? Or doing, yeah. And I just thought to myself, you know, I'm going to start a dog walking business. So that was a light bulb. That was it. Bang. That Came was, up with the like, name yeah. Dogs Day Afternoon. Put an ad in the newspaper and got my first so, client the so, week after. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. How long did it take before you got your first client? Uh, one put, week. About a week. Yeah. And then what was it? And was then it just gradual... steam rolled after that. I still had to continue doing part time work. So you're working in the corporate sector. Working, the time. yeah. Not happy. Not happy. Right. I need well, what, to be what, outside. What were you doing? I'm outside. Course. Yeah. No, I was call center. Horrible work. Oh, okay. Was right. that just a means to an end? Just a means it? to an end. I worked in a few restaurants, did uh, stupidly security at Q Bar and a few places like that. <laughs> we've all been there, man. We've all been there we've just to be there. that out there, just to be that social person. Yeah, yeah, we've all um, been there. And then gradually set it up, got more and more clients, and then saw a niche and opened up the grooming aspect of it. But, but tell me about getting these clients. So, so obviously you got your first client, and then did you advertise? What was your what was your was it a word oh, of mouth? Predominantly word of mouth. Did you just concentrate on one area, and or is that is that what? You, and you've sort of expanded, or how, how have you sort of played? No, played we concentrated out? basically around Bayside. Yeah. Um, Elwood, St Kilda. Did a little bit of South Yarra. Used to do Richmond, those places like that. Obviously, now you can't get across Melbourne anymore. Cool. Yeah, no, so, because of the traffic. Uh, so, yeah, because so, of traffic. So, logistically... Logistically, you... made it smaller, made it tighter, ran a better ship. Fantastic. Um, advertising was pretty well much by itself. We were one of the first to do dog walking in Fantastic. Victoria. Oh, so, the Herald Sun, The Age, the local newspapers just kept doing stories did, on us. Did you know... This is interesting. So, you had that light bulb moment... Did you know when you started this, uh, when you started the, the business, because I mean, you obviously love being outside, you obviously have a love of pets and dogs. Yep. Did you envisage, did you have a plan that it was going to, like, this is, did you set for, for sort of dominate, or like world domination, or did you just go, you know what, I'm going to give this a go, and I'll just see where it goes? Or did you have, did you say, you know, did you... Uh, did you have a plan? I'm sorry. Oh, well, anyone that knows me knows that I have no plans <laughs> at all. Uh, so it was Love totally, that. totally just flying by the seat of my pants. Um, it just gave me an opportunity to do what I love, which is being outside, playing with dogs, training dogs. I get to meet nice people. I get to meet yeah, great dog pe dogs. Dog people. Good dog people, people good basically, good. yeah. Dog people, we still have people. cat people. Yeah, yeah. But predominantly dog people. So I get to meet good people. Um, yeah, there's the good and the bad of the business, but overall, I love it. Yeah, now, biz yeah, that's business is business. Yeah. You got to take the, the good with the bad. But it's so you, so you said you were one of the first. That must have been a spin out because I mean, obviously now, like I said, it's it's normal. There's dog walking services everywhere. That would have been a really good, um, some good leverage for you to sort of market the business. So was that was sort of like, is that is that how the sort of the, you, the business sort of got legs and started to grow? grow in, in some capacity yeah to an extent i think it was probably more just the customer service we focused on keeping it relatively small yeah so that way because we're coming in and out of people's houses it has to be personal sure we can't just you know throw keys to a random stranger okay. so we we build up that trust we've been to clients weddings you know kids birthdays i've had clients comes to parties etc so we've just we maintained a nice level i yeah, you know, obviously, 
the idea of being a, I guess, a more of a popular business, as in larger, I'm not sure how to word it. Sure, sure. Right, would be great. But then you can't control it. No, because I think we've had this conversation, because bigger always isn't better. Sometimes no. it's better to keep it tight, like you said, yeah. and you can concentrate and, and, and actually give the give service, give good service. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Because So while people are at work, so people have entrusted you to go to their homes. To their homes, house so, keys. Take the dogs for a walk, bring them back. Bring them back, that's fresh water, etc. It's nice. It's a nice feeling of trust. That's beautiful. So so your clients would obviously be a lot of referrals, people that actually trust you and so on. Yep. And that's awesome, man. And I suppose you'd, be, you'd also develop a bond with these animals, don't you? We do, very much so. I mean, we've you know, there's some dogs that we've had since six weeks of age, or sorry, eight weeks of age, that uh, have now have passed, and yeah, now we're on yeah, the next. Yeah, you're on the next one. We're on their next one, and you yeah, know we're man. we're part of these people's families. It's a really really it nice. It must feeling. be a beautiful feeling. Man. It is a nice so did you feeling. See, so it must be must be a spin out when you sort of think to yourself, "Here I'm sitting at the George, whatever twenty years ago, or conservatively." Yeah, twenty years ago, man. <laughs> conservatively, um, to see where you are now, it must must be a spin out to sort of look back and go, "Wow." Yeah, so what's, what looks as well because because from that because it was, was it did, was it an um, an involvement to, to open up the salon that the dog the grooming sa salon? we saw the niche for the dog grooming it's not an easy job to do no um, and then we were in Albert Park where predominantly majority of the dog walking was occurring sure uh, and then we noticed there was no groomers in the area or there were few and far between yeah yeah and we just took the opportunity I happened to be walking past. A shop one day and the landlord was arguing arguing with the tenant and we offered to take over the lease and we started from there. Did you push the tenant out of the way and go, so listen? No, 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 they there. were ready to go. <laughs> oh, fantastic, man. So, yeah, and it's been good. We've had great staff, have great staff. You know, lots has changed over the years. I've been to the salon. Yeah, it's it a great, way. Yeah, and it's a great, it's a great it's spot. It's got man. good energy. It's got a great, it's a great little spot. It's a beautiful Victorian. Yeah. Double fronted Victorian, sorry, double, double story, story Victorian. Victorian. Yeah. And so that's and so that's now. What do, what do you see it going? Do you, do you see just yeah, you're happy just just very happy to maintain. I think the next step would be ideally to be setting up a kennel environment, short term kennel environment uh, up at the farm. Fantastic. That's uh, great. Along the lines of the dogs that are a little bit ill at ease, the ones that can't go into a normal kennel yeah, yeah. and can't be left alone. Sure, sure, so sure. So create so a more night. of a personal... Yeah, and more, more of a personal, small-scale kennel service, more of a farm state. So they can just come around and run around with me and the dogs and follow me on the motorbike. That's fantastic, man. Fingers crossed. Oh, fantastic. Thanks, Darren. Thanks Thank for you, joining sir. me, Thank you, sir. We'll man. see you again, and, Tony. And good luck with everything, buddy. Done. Thank, Thank you, you Bella. Ciao.